Alright, looks like we're live. Cool. What is up, everybody? I am Supersonic71087. I'm bringing you a tutorial of Super Mario Bros. Warpless. Um, yeah, even though I'm called Sonic and I'm running a Mario game, it makes total sense, I know. But um, what I'm going to do first is I'll do an actual run, and then after that I will go through each level step by step on how to run the game and we'll see how it goes from there yo what's up virus all right so we're gonna go ahead and start off with the run all right one dash one nothing really special here although you want to get a three 380 in the underground section but um 379 is also okay Oh, thanks, animal. What's up, Evo? Time to get educated, indeed. I just gotta remember, I don't have splits, so <laughs> I'm not gonna split every time. Okay, so normally I would grab the mushroom in 1-3, but for safe strats, you can grab it in 1-2. Uh, mainly because of these tight jumps that usually comes up in this area right here. Because let's use that Koopa for safety. And those pipe jumps, they're basically one frame jumps. Um, it's actually okay if you miss a pipe jump here and there. But um, if you want to like go fast and then you know keep the frame roll. And you don't want a 1, 3, or a 6 at the end of the timer because that gives you fireworks. Actually, 1 is okay, but 3 will give you 3 fireworks. 6 will give you 6. And um, as far as like time loss goes, uh, 3 fireworks usually cost about roughly a second. And then um, six fireworks cost roughly about two to two to two point five seconds. So <clears throat> normally I would grab the mushroom here in one dash three if you're going for like faster strats. But since we have the mushroom already, we just finish it through straight through. All right, one dash four. I'm going to be performing a glitch here, and I think it would be pretty easy for a lot of upcoming runners who've never ran this game before. So I'm going for a specific glitch called Small Fire Glitch. So basically what I did there is I touched Bowser and the axe at the same frame. So the game gets confused thinking that you beat the level but at the same time you got damage but it retains your big state but you're technically small. So the next time I actually grab a power up here it's a mushroom turning me small. And then when I grab the fire flower, I'll be small and have fire. Now you may notice for like a split second that big fire Mario is appearing every time I shoot a fireball. That does not affect your hitbox whatsoever. So you can pretty much abuse the hitbox by shooting enemies from underneath in water levels. Um, you don't have to worry about you know tight jumps that big Mario usually does. 
So this is like, it's pretty much a two-in-one special. Like you have the properties of Big Fire Mario and like, you know, the accessibility of going through and like tighter spots. So here we are in our water level. Uh, I'll do some demonstrations of killing enemies from underneath. So you can pretty much see like how crazy this hitbox is. You kind of see that I shot them from under, sort of. But normally like in water levels, like it's pretty fun to like shoot down these enemies, but I try to refrain from that. Mainly because of the ending of the level. Because sometimes I'll get like a really bad pattern with the cheap cheeps and the bloopers. So I try to like kind of cut back on shooting down the enemies. Unless they're like literally in your way, then you would have to shoot them down. Alright, 2-3. Um, pretty straightforward level, just gotta watch out for the cheap cheeps. You can kind of see that I shot a fireball underneath them, but I didn't get damaged. Even though I had like half of Big Fire Mario out. You can kind of kill them from underneath too, but it has to be like specific timing, but I wouldn't really recommend that unless you want to be swaggy. So just straightforward, straightforward level, get a 240. <clears throat> Alright, 2-4. There aren't really much hazards here. Um, you can pretty much run under these fire bars, no problem. Do you want to go for that jump on the elevator section? Now here's the thing, with Bowser, if you shoot him down five times, it'll kill him, and then when you grab the axe, he'll just go straight directly to Toad. Um, however, if you just grab the axe without killing Bowser, it does a bridge animation, and it takes about two and a half seconds for it to go down. So that's like a big time save, like from uh, castles 2 through 7. So you can save a lot of time that way. 3-1 is just pretty much picking your battles with the enemies. Like you kind of notice that I'm not shooting everybody down. Because there will be times where there is multiple enemies grouped together and if you shoot a fireball it will actually create lag. So I just basically jump over them. Usually when they're grouped by three, because you can only have up to four enemy sprites at a time. So And plus the fireball actually counts as a sprite, like an enemy sprite. So, you know, if you have like four enemies on screen and you shoot a fireball, you just notice a lag frame. So now something I didn't touch on at the very beginning is the, the flagpole itself. So basically this game has frame rules. And Darbian pretty much put it best with this analogy that you can think of the end of the level as a bus stop and the bus leaves every 21 frames or 0.35 seconds. So depending on how fast or slow you're going, it'll determine what patterns you get in the next level. And of course it's like there's so many different paces you can go in this game. Um, but. Like if you're going on a set pace and you know what frame roll you're on, then it's pretty easy to tell like what's coming up ahead. 3-4 is usually a pretty dangerous level, uh, mainly for this section coming up here, these potaboos. I missed the, missed the axe, but that's okay. So optimally you can beat this level in 262 on the timer. Um, it's actually a little more difficult to do that with Big Mario as well, but still very doable. You can also use the elevator to your advantage, um, that's in Bowser's layer. You can pretty much like bump into that and then sh start shooting fireballs and he won't really get to you, unless he does a specific jump where he can just literally get in your way. 4-1 is pretty much the most free level in the game. It's pretty much the same way in any percent as well. Okay, so 4-2, this is our second underground level. You can pretty much go two routes here. 
you can go the top route or the bottom route. I usually prefer the bottom route because it's much more fun. But for safetyness, you want to go on the top route. Just so you can avoid all those piranha plants. And then there is a specific spot where you do have to drop down. Otherwise, it'll take you to the warp zone and you don't want to do that. If I slow down even for like a second, I would have gotten that 343 on the timer, so... <laughs> Yo, what's up, Cypherin? Still working, but you're here? <laughs> oh god, you could be here, man. 4-3 is probably one of the most annoying levels in the run. Especially if you're trying to get the frame rule here. Um, you'll kind of notice that I'm doing just smaller jumps. Because as you notice, when I grab the flagpole and then Mario... There's like a little bit of s sky pixels on the bottom of them. Um, that's basically called sky boots or sky butt if you're small. You can actually save a frame roll that way. But even if you don't get that, it's still okay because 4-3 is a pretty difficult level to run. It's mainly based on platforming. Now 4-4 is a maze level. Um, it's basically go up and down on the specific routes. This Bowser fight is actually pretty dangerous with the fire bar, the potaboo, and Bowser shooting fire. So it's usually recommended to like kind of slow down, shoot him down. That way you don't lose fire there. Because I've had a lot of runs die to 4-4 from losing fire. 5-1, there's actually no power-ups in this level. There is a Starman if you want to take that for safety. Um, I usually like going up that top rock so I can watch out for that bullet bill. Because there's like different times where he would shoot. Yeah, 5-2 is actually a much more scary level. Thankfully that bullet bill did not shoot. There's Hammer Bros here. Now if, if you have fire, then you can pretty much shoot him down. Watch out for this area here. That jump is usually pretty tough to make. You would have to like literally jump at the last pixel of that. Just so you can like make it on the step and then go get a 347 on the timer. Yeah, work feels bad, man, indeed. Alright, 5-3, another run killer. Especially for this particular spot right here. You want to stomp on that Goomba specifically because of that platform spawning. If you didn't stomp on that Goomba or the Koopa, then that platform would not appear because there's too many sprites on the screen. So it's actually really important to get that kill, otherwise you'll just fall straight to your death. And if you die as small fire Mario, um, you will revert back to normal, and you would have to do the glitch again. So it wouldn't really be worth it to do that. Now, there was actually a strat here that you can do to get good fire bars, but I didn't do that. I will actually explain that um, during the level by level tutorial. And you kind of see that I use the platform as leverage. So. So World 5 is a pretty scary world, but the later levels do get a little harder. Now I actually jump up there on those two question blocks so that the Lucky 2 doesn't spawn a spiny right at the start. So that'll actually give you just like a slight advantage to like jump and get past them. And this is technically like 4-1 as well, like it's just the Lucky 2 just throwing spinies at you. Now you kind of notice that I did get a 1 at the end of the timer, and that'll give me one firework, but it doesn't cost any time at all. It'll just basically take you to the next screen. 6-2 is a pretty fun level with fire. Um, if you're small on this level, it's actually more difficult because you would have to do like precise pipe jumps here. But with fire, it makes everything so much easier. Kind of hoping I would kill that Goomba, but that's okay. Now, I actually intentionally slowed down there. Otherwise, I would have gotten a 3 at the end. I hope everyone's doing well tonight. Oh, it's still afternoon for me, but I'm sure it's night for a lot of people right now. 
or wherever you may be around the world. Six dash three can be a pretty scary level. For safety, you can take the spring here. Um, otherwise, you can take the bottom route just to avoid the bullet bill. But usually, the bullet bill can spawn at different areas, so he can be a troll sometimes. 6 4 is actually another level where runs can die. So, for a safety strat, you can just wait here for a bit, then move forward. You can actually take your time on these fire bars here, otherwise you'll lose your power up. Now this is where Bowser starts to throw hammers. Now you kind of notice that there was lag there because of all the hammers that Bowser was throwing. I mean sometimes it can go to your advantage too just to get the shots down correctly on Bowser. Seven dash one, just a lot of bullet bill cannons plus hammer bros. Also, want to intentionally slow down here so you can get a 352. Because you kept on going, then you would have gotten a 353. So there's like a few levels like that where if you try to go as fast as possible, then you'll just get a three at the end. So you don't want to do that. <laughs> Alright, 7-2, this is the second water level. Uh, this will have more cheap cheeps and bloopers here. Um, I'm going to try to manipulate the ending section by not killing any blooper or cheap cheap unless they're completely in my way, like this one. So I'm just pretty much picking my battles again. And especially while being small, it's pretty beneficial in the water areas, unless you get that really bad pattern. Like that one right there. Yeah, I'm actually... That's a really bad blooper there. Oof! Barely made it through. That was the blooper I was talking about, but I guess... <laughs> you know, I had a couple enemies I had to shoot down, so... Barely made it through that one. Alright, 7-3. So as you notice, there's like a lot of copy levels here. But... With the copied levels, they just add more enemies to it. Oh, gee. I right, stopped on that Koopa. That would have put me into the pit. Kind of have to be careful here. That almost ended up on the blooper reel. <laughs> yeah. A bad blooper reel. Alright, now we're at 7-4. This is another maze level. So you want to go on the bottom, the middle, and the top. So that's for the first phase. Second phase, you want to go top and get this middle section, that big bar, and then top again. So it should bring you to Bowser's layer. And just shoot him down. There you go. Alright, so we're on the home stretch here. There's four more levels in this run. Now you can pretty much treat this like any percent. Now, since you have fire, these um, piranha plants can be easily dealt with. I'm going to stomp on those two Koopas to despawn one of the Goombas there. Normally, in any percent, you'll hit that star block. Um, there's a thing called good judges. It basically determines if you got the good frame roll or not. Um, it's actually more useful in any percent than it is in Warpless. As of now. But, um... Still get an easy 200 here. As you keep fire. Eight dash two is another dangerous level, especially at the very start here. Just trying to get underneath that Koopa. There's like a lot of platforming here. I'm just basically jumping on various platforms to keep my speed going. There is a safety strat here. You can actually go down this pipe. 
and it'll despawn all the Koopas in this section right here. It doesn't really take you anywhere, but in case you don't want to deal with the Koopas, you can just do that. You want to be careful with that Koopa as well. Now, I'm going to get three fireworks here, but that's okay. It's actually more better to keep fire, or any power-up for that matter, because if you get hit and you turn small, it'll basically make you big, and you're very vulnerable, and it's like the most dangerous state you can be in. Eight dash three, just gotta worry about the hammer bros. Well, I'm getting pretty good bros here. Just pretty much shoot them down. They won't be a bother to you. I'm gonna brush up against that um, that platform there so you can get a 242. Yo, what's up, Taku? Mario runs indeed. All right, final level of the game. Jump off that third step. Do a full jump here into that pipe. Ah, I almost got the wall jump. I got the pixel, but I just missed the wall jump. That's okay though. You need the turnaround room. Just wanna go to the right a little bit, just so you can do a wrong warp here. Now the water section is usually pretty dangerous. And now at the very end here. Bowser was nice, and there we go. <laughs> it's 1930. That's yeah, actually not bad. Considering with the fireworks that I got and then some safe strats that I implemented. But yeah, as you can see, you can get a sub-20 as small fire Mario. And I will pretty much demonstrate how to do that on the power pack. Yo, oh, thanks for the GG's, guys. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to pop in the power pack. And then we'll go through level by level what you need to do. And then probably afterwards, I'll do one more run. Alright. Just got the power pack handy. Yeah, casual 1930. <laughs> Yo, thanks, Ant. Okay, so for 1-1, there's a couple of things you can do here. So, you can actually grab the mushroom in this level, in case you want to power up really early. So it'll look something like this. So if you do like a turnaround here to land on that Goomba. Alright, let me try that again. Do a turnaround. Then grab the mushroom. That's one way you can get the power up pretty early. But I feel like it's not really necessary to get it here. I mean, I, I feel like it's more beneficial to get it in 1-2. But in case you want to do like big fire strats, you can get the mushroom in 1-1 and then you can get the fire flower in 1-2 unless you want to try small fire, which is what I'll demonstrate in this one. So 1-2. Make a save state right here. So let's say you already have mushroom already, we'll just keep going. I usually like to, um, let me see if I can get a cursor on here so I can show you guys what's going on. Let me, oops, uh, let's do this and capture cursor. Okay. So I basically want to hit on that Koopa right there. And I want to face left while doing that. The reason being is as you're facing left and then you're brushing up against the wall, you can actually get more pixels that way. Now, if you're facing right and you're brushing up against the wall, you will not get enough pixels from it. So it'll actually be a little slower to do it that way if you want to try to go for this safe strat. So I want to stomp on this Doom or Koopa. Then you want to do a crouch slide underneath that gap. So like if you were to do it the other way around. I kind of know that I kind of bonged into there a little weirdly, so. It's more better to just 
basically turn around for like a split second. And then do a crouch slide, get the enemies out of the way, do a crouch jump over that Goomba. Now pipe jumps. Those are like one frame jumps. So as you're landing on the lip of the pipe, you can jump again and then you can avoid the piranha plant because their hitbox is actually on the stem. They actually fixed that in the All-Stars version to like, if you try to do a pipe jump over the piranha plant, you'll actually get hit. But in this version, like it's basically on where, I guess where the stem begins on the piranha plant. So that's why you're able to pass through it pretty easily. So we'll do a pipe jump here. Now that time I missed it, so I ran straight into the piranha plant. So you just want to like kind of land on this one. So as you do that first pipe jump, you should land on this lip right here. So you can do another jump again. If you tend to miss it, normally what I usually do is I'll basically turn left against this pipe right here. And then just kind of brush up against it. So that way you don't really lose momentum. Crouch. Sometimes that Goomba can be in different spots depending on how fast you do that. I keep on getting hit by that stupid piranha plant. Now if you want to do this with fire early on, you can do it this way. Just shoot everything in your path. What the heck? <clears throat> I'm not used to playing as big, Mar big fire Mario a lot. Although, like the current world record run uses Big Fire Mario because it's actually a lot faster. But in order to get a sub 20, you don't necessarily need to play as Big Fire Mario. You can just do this as Small Fire. That <laughs> pesky one frame trick, I know. This game is full of them. Let's see if I can get the pipe jump this time. There we go. All right, we got it now. I basically just pass through, enter the, the pipe right here. There you go, that's 1-2. One 1-3, dash two. One dash three, one dash three is actually pretty straightforward. Um, there's really nothing special about the level. In case you didn't grab the mushroom yet, so let's say you didn't grab the mushroom and you're going this that's you know being small you want to like do like a turnaround jump you want to hit the block right here so you kind of notice how Mario's kind of lined up at the right side of the block so you hit the block and then as you're jumping you tap right for one frame and you actually grab it through the block too so it'll seem like he's clipping through so that way, you know, you can actually grab the power up before it actually fully comes out of the box. So, let me try that when I'm small. So let me die here intentionally. So this is how it would look like if you were to grab the mushroom here. So I'll do like a turnaround. See how I grabbed it right away? <laughs> <laughs> engineering subjects so yeah like the, the mushroom was barely coming out from there and I still grabbed it now if I didn't do that so let's say I would I were to get the mushroom again so now you'll see how long it takes for the mushroom to come out of the block if I don't do the fast grab that's a lot slower so that's in case you don't get the fire or the mushroom there. But since we already have the mushroom, we don't have to worry about that. It's pretty much your preference when you want to grab the mushroom in World 1. You can get in 1-1, 1-2, 1-3. Really doesn't matter. Okay, so when you stomp on this particular Koopa, you kind of notice how my timer is showing at 270, right? So that's pretty much going to give me an indicator of what the ending would be. So when I grab the flagpole, it's 260, so that'll give me 10 ticks on the timer to get through the level. Now let's say I were to like kind of slow it down a bit. And I'll stomp on that same Koopa. 
Okay, now it's showing an 8 at the end of the timer. So as I'm still going, you get an 8. 258. So exactly 10 ticks there. Uh, Tacker Rush? I don't know if I'm saying your name right. I'm, I apologize if I'm butchering your name. Um, the world record has big fire Mario because there's only two power-up grabs. And plus you get an extra Bowser kill in 1-4. But with small fire Mario, you have an extra power-up to grab and plus the setup is... It takes a little time, but you can still get like at least a 1920 with it. The lowest I've gotten was a 1918 with small fire. But I can definitely push it to like 1915 or something like that. Okay, so now I'll show you how to get the small fire glitch. So basically what you want to do... Okay, so basically Bowser has three different jumps. He'll either jump completely backwards, he'll do like this backwards forwards jump, or a completely forwards jump. Now, the best case scenario to have with this particular glitch is you want him to jump backwards. Um, you know, you get you get him to jump backwards and you get like the perfect setup where you can get aligned with the axe and Bowser at the same time. Now, if he does like the backwards forwards jump, that's like about a second slower. Um, not really a second slower, probably like maybe two seconds slower. But the forwards jump is the worst jump that you can have for this particular setup. Because you would have to wait for him to get to you. And he's really slow too. So, um, so you kind of notice how I'm waiting for him to come in. You kind of see... Let me see if I can get a better angle of this. So I grab the axe. And then you can kind of see like the tip of Mario's toe is on Bowser's eyeball. And now you see the iframes. That pretty much gives you the indicator that you got the glitch correctly. So if you try to do it like a little earlier or something, you kind of notice that there's a lot of black pixels around. So it's actually a pretty consistent setup to get this small fire glitch. Yeah, two power ups for a world record. Alright, 2-1. So now we want to grab the power-ups. So pretty much what I like to do here is break one of these blocks and then grab the power-up from the left side. You can also do the same thing on the right as well. You can hit the power-up block, break a block here, then grab it from the right side. So it's pretty much your preference whether you want to grab it from the left side or the right side. So now once you grab your power-up, You want to avoid that Goomba. You can pretty much jump anywhere. You want to do that pipe jump there so you can pretty much line yourself underneath this block right here. And then you can grab the Fire Flower that way. Now, as you can see, while I'm standing and shooting, you can see Big Fire Mario up here. But it doesn't enlarge your hitbox by any way. <clears throat> uh, Danny, it's actually not a reverse mushroom. It's a glitch that I performed in 1-4. It's called the small fire glitch. Can I do like a pipe jump there. You don't necessarily have to do a pipe jump if you're not comfortable with it. What you can do is you can kind of brush up against the pipe. And then you can let the Koopa just walk off the platform. And then you can just grab the fire flower that way. But if you want to do it faster... I usually like to do it this way. You can actually buffer out of a power-up grab. So I'll do a jump buffer. So let's say I grab the power-up. I'm not pushing anything on the D-pad or anything else. Now during the power-up animation, if you hold the A button, he'll jump. So that's called jump buffering out of a power-up. So I'll just grab the power-up. You can choose the jump buffer or not, it's really your call. Now if you want to do it fast, you would rather want to do a pipe jump there. And then just kill the Koopa. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much a faster way to grab the power-ups. But of course, you know, if you're not comfortable with it, you can always do it the slow way. And the safe way too. 
I usually like to play crazy in this game, so me being safe in this is very rare. You can use a Koopa to your advantage to get rid of those enemies. Do a full jump here to get past that Piranha Plant and land on this particular spot. I'm not used to like creating safe states all that much. Oops. Yeah, sometimes you can miss that pipe jump if you're trying to go fast. So use this Koopa as a meat shield. Get rid of all the enemies. Then from this platform, at the last block, do a full jump to land here. Then you want to shoot down those piranha plants as you keep your momentum going. Then do another full jump to land here. So there's like two full jumps you got to do in order to pass these gaps here. Then you can pretty much take the top route here to avoid all the enemies on the bottom. Now there's two options you can do here. You can get this question block and climb up that way, but it's actually a lot slower to do that. If you want to do it the fast way, you would have to like use the spring to get up on this platform up here. Now sometimes the spring can be pretty finicky and you won't be able to get enough height to get up here. So normally what I like to do there is just do like a light jump and as I'm like on the very bottom of the spring, just push the A button again and then that'll take you up to the top. So now I'll play through the level normally. Just go ahead and let this guy go. Full jump here, shoot down these two prawn plants, do another full jump here. And take this top route. You can pretty much see from my input display as well, like, you know, how long I'm pushing the button, like the jump button and all that. It is slightly delayed because of, I don't know why it's slightly delayed, but, but you can pretty much get the general idea of what's going on. So that's 2-1. 2-2, two -two, first water level. You can pretty much do target practice here. It's actually pretty straightforward. So like with the fireballs, you can kind of see how the trajectory is. It kind of looks like a down, down right diagonal type of line. But normally what I like to do if I were to shoot any enemies is try to get as close as possible to them and then shoot them down. Um, if you think that they're going to be in the way, you can just pretty much shoot as many as possible. That coral that I just swam over, it's called the Reef of Grief. Sometimes you can actually run into that. If you don't like swim at a specific spot. I'll make a safe state over in that area. And if you hold the A button, um, you'll just drop down slightly faster on the water. And then, you know, if you tap A a bunch of times, you'll just be swimming up. Yeah, sometimes you can just walk on that coral and then that'll like pretty much bonk you against the ceiling and stuff like that. So optimally you can get a 316 here, but if you get anywhere between, I would say uh, 313 to 316, you're pretty much good to go. If you get a 312 and then by the time you exit out of the, you know, the outside area, uh, you have like six ticks on the timer to grab the flagpole. So if you get like a 312 pipe exit, then you'll get a 306 on the flagpole. So you can pretty much keep that in mind. So anytime you see a level like this, either underwater or underground, you'll always have six ticks on the timer to get to the flagpole. So as you notice, I got a 316 pipe exit. Grab the flagpole to 310. Negative 45 degree angle on the fireballs. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you for that. 2-3. Yeah, this one, you can just pretty much run straight through. It's probably one of the easiest levels to get through. Although the cheap cheats may like make it seem pretty intimidating, but it's really not that bad at all. Now it also does depend on the frame roll you're on too. So if you're like, you know, you exit a level slowly and you see this different cheap cheat pattern that you're seeing now, you have the fireballs to your advantage so you can like pretty much shoot blindly and then sometimes the cheap cheats will just appear right into the fireball and they'll just die instantly. So I'll just play through 2-3 one more time. 
So I, I can pretty much just keep shooting fireballs. Luck, maybe a lucky cheap cheap will just run into it. Other times, like, it's really not necessary to do this, but... You know, if you just want to keep shooting fireballs. But you want to keep your momentum going, too, so... Easy 240 there. Yeah, the timer ticks are very different in this game. Alright, so 2-4. Um, there's like a couple things you can do here. If you don't want to go for that full jump, you can just do like small jumps to get past this part. Or, you can just do a full jump to this middle one, another full jump to get past here easily. And you don't have to worry about the fire bars touching you because you're small. Now, I usually like to do that um, platform jump there. If you don't want to do that platform jump exactly, you can pretty much wait it out. You can choose to go like up in this upper area or the um, bottom area. There's like different routes you can do. You can just do like a full jump to this platform here. But it's actually more riskier to do that. But of course, doing the, um, the elevator jump is even riskier as well. But this is how the elevator jump would look. So as you're going, run off this platform, then jump instantly right as you land on that elevator so you can bump on the next one. Yes, Supersonic71087 is my name. I'm called Sonic, but I play Mario. want to shoot a couple fireballs there to get a bit of a head start on Bowser. Let me try to make a safe state right before the Bowser fight. I'm actually not used to making safe states all that much. So let's do this here. I'll make one. So there's like a few ways you can kill Bowser in this level. So like you see this platform that's moving left and right. You can pretty much use this to your advantage. So if you just like bump right into it while Bowser's still like on screen, you can use this and then start mashing B to shoot him down. And it takes five fireballs to kill him, so, so you can do something like this. Just shoot him down and then grab the axe and then it'll just take you straight through without having the um, bridge collapse. So there's a few levels that'll give you that opportunity to do that. Alright, 3-1. This one... I usually like going on this top route here. So like I'll be jumping on this on this block here into this one. And then I'll do like a full, not a really a full jump, but like a mid jump to shoot that piranha plant down. So that way I can land on it, then shoot this other guy. So if, as you're jumping and shooting, you just like, as you're jumping, you can shoot the fireball. Or you can like shoot it while it's descending. So do something like this. Oops, not like that. So you can like shoot while you're ascending or descending, depending on how comfortable you are with shooting fireballs. Or I guess another thing you can do, take this bottom route here, but then you would have to watch out for that Koopa. You would have to shoot that first Koopa down, otherwise you'll get hit. Like so. And you see as I get hit, I'm big now. You're in a very vulnerable state because your hitbox is basically Big Mario again. And I guess one benefit is you can break blocks and stuff, but you do not want to get hit in this run. Otherwise, you're like practically in trouble. <laughs> okay, this section right here. You can choose to shoot down all the enemies or just like basically land on that small block right here and then just do a like a full jump so you can get past that piranha plant so do something like that and then jump on here do like a full jump to land on this bridge and you can choose to shoot the goombas down but i personally don't do that um it's pretty much your call whether you want to shoot them down or not but usually when i want to shoot down enemies while keeping my speed I basically want to get as close as possible, so that way you can just shoot them all in a row. Otherwise, if you just miss one shot, you'll get hit from it. 
So it'll look like something like that. See, I shot late and I got hit. You don't want to do that. So you want to like kind of time your shots. If you you want to just like shoot through them. Okay, now this section right here. So you can pretty much go any route here. Since you have Fire Flower, you can practically go either the top route, the middle route, or the bottom route. But you do have to watch out for those Hammer Bros. So depending on which way you go, just be sure to like shoot a couple fireballs just to see if the Hammer Bro will be in the area that you're going to, just so you can be in the safe spot. Oops. I usually take the top route and then just make sure I shoot the, the bros down. Now this part, I usually try to land on this middle platform here. So it'll look something like this. So I'll do a full jump to land on this one, this top stair. And then do another jump to land here. And then do like a light jump so that way you don't bonk into this platform here. So it'll be like, do a full jump, another full jump, light jump, light jump. So you can still keep your momentum going. Now this ending section is usually pretty dangerous too. So let me get to that point. You can also go on the bottom route too, if you're more comfortable with that. You want to make sure you shoot that Koopa down. If you miss that Koopa, you'll get hit from it. So you kind of want to time your fireball to where that Koopa that's walking down the steps, that you can just shoot him down and he'll just be out of your way. So it'll pretty much look something like this. So when I get to that spot. And then usually when I land on this fifth step right here, I do like a slight turnaround. And then I do like a full jump so I can avoid this other Koopa that's walking down. And then land on this platform up here on the stairs. Because there will be times where you, where you like miss your shot or something, or you miss a jump, you'll get hit. That's a 346. You want to get a 347 on the timer. Yeah, see, I jumped straight up, like without turning around, and I ran right into the Koopa with my foot. <laughs> it would have looked like that you can still stomp on him. But sometimes the hitboxes can be pretty pretty finicky in this game. So it's like, it'll seem like you did something, but the game thinks otherwise. So, do it this way. There we go. You just avoid that Koopa right there. Um, usually, um, some runners will like to shoot that other Koopa down, which is also doable. But I tend to not do that. Okay, 3-2, now this is pretty much one of those levels where you see enemies and you're like, you want to shoot them down a lot. Now I'm going to try to find an instance where there's like multiple enemies on screen and I'm going to shoot a fireball. So let me see if I can group these enemies together here. Let me see if I can get a better grouping than that. Yeah, you see? I shot like a bunch of fireballs on in a row be like fireball happy it'll just create a lag frame you don't want to do that so that's why you kind of want to pick your battles here and normally what I like to do is just jump over the enemies like you don't have the urge to like shoot them down or anything like that just jump over them because you don't want to like create any sort of lag because that'll you know cost you frames so there may be like some instances where you need to like shoot at least an enemy down or something. So like the beginning enemy is like pretty much as you hold B when you're transitioning to a new screen, it'll automatically shoot a fireball. So like that first enemy, you can just shoot him down. Doesn't matter. But everybody else you can practically just avoid. Um, if you don't feel comfortable getting past this piranha plant, you can shoot him down. And just do like full jumps, half jumps, and then just go straight through the level with uh, 245 on the timer. Alright, 3-3. Three three. This one's another one of those pick a route, any route type of levels. I usually like to do a full jump to land on this. 
Um, sometimes I'll see people go down here, but it's actually a lot slower to go down there. So you just want to like jump over that platform just to land on this spot. You don't want to like go on the bottom route because it's actually a lot slower. So shoot that guy, do a full jump to land on this platform. And you just want to like stay on the top route pretty much. Just do like light jumps and shoot those two Koopas down. Pretty straightforward level. Now if you want to try a different route, so let's say you want to go down on the bottom, you can do this too. But it does get a little dangerous with those jumps also, so it's better to take the top route for this one. So again, top route, we'll do this one more time. Some people say like these coins right here kind of match with the music, but they're just a coincidence. It doesn't really match with the melody. It's like its own thing. That's 3-3. Pretty straightforward. 3-4, this is where it kind of gets a little dangerous here. So, there could be various scenarios. This particular Potaboo, he can pretty much jump up at any height at the very start of the level. So normally you want to like do a full jump to get past that Potaboo. But other times like that Potaboo will just be in your way and you'll get hit from it. So what you want to do is just do a full jump like right at this pixel here. So you want to do a full jump like right about here. And you'll basically avoid that Potaboo no matter what. Now if you don't want to do that you can choose to go a little slower here, just to avoid that potaboo. Then you just want to just jump through these uh, um, fire bars. Then you can kind of take it slow here. And there's one of those, another one of those platforms that I was describing in 2-4. So if you want to do it full speed, it'll look something like this. Kind of wait on that first Potaboo and then just jump over the last two. So you can get like a 259 in this level. Now if you want to do quickly, which is probably not recommended, but I'll show you a quicker way to do this. Jump over that first guy, then jump underneath these two guys. And you can get a 262 that way, but it's more riskier because of the potaboos and then the way how you shoot the fireballs. So, it's pretty much your call. I would suggest, you know, if you're just starting to run this game, um, just take it slow in this potaboo section up right here. Just kind of wait out this first one and then just jump over the last two. And see how Bowser jumped twice like that? That's like worst case scenario that can happen. So you can like pretty much wait it out, just shoot the fireballs safely. You can also shoot the fireballs at that point, but sometimes you'll get like various patterns. So, so let me do it fast one more time. This pattern doesn't always happen. It, it depends on how the frame rules are. So that's pretty much 3-4. So you can pretty much take it safely. You can still get a pretty good time on it. 4-1, there's really nothing to explain here. Just go straight through. Don't have to worry about anything. You can grab coins if you want. If you want to build up your coin count to get a 1-up. Because normally, when you get to 4-1, you would have enough coins to get a 1-up here. But somewhere down the route of World 4, you'll get a 1-up, so you don't have to like worry about it. So yeah, pretty simple level, like nothing really needs to be said for 4-1. 4-2, on the other hand, there's two routes you can take. As I will demonstrate here. Okay, this is the route that I normally like to take. So you want to stop on that middle Goomba. 
this is the bottom route. So this is my preferred route that I usually like to take. It's actually a little more dangerous because you gotta have like precise fireball shots. But I feel like that's faster. Now the other way to do this, which is more safer, is going up on this route up here. So you don't have to like worry about any enemies whatsoever. This would be more recommended um, to go out this top route, but just be sure to drop down here. Just so you can still exit with the 350 on the timer. So that way you can get a 344 on the flagpole. Now if you slow down just slightly, so let's say I was doing the top route and I bonk into a ceiling and I'll get like a 349 pipe exit. So that'll give me like a 343 on the timer. So like, I keep going, I bonk. So 349 on the timer. Now when I grab the flagpole, 343. That's something you don't want happening. Because you don't want to get fireworks in this run with the exception of one firework. So I'll do the bottom route one more time. It's pretty much just a matter of um, muscle memory with the fireballs. Um, you can be trigger happy if you want, but try not to be too trigger happy. <laughs> so that's 4-2. So yeah, that's pretty much your preference, whether you want to take the top route or the bottom route. I would highly recommend taking the top route for this one. And just be sure to slow down when you drop down. Is it safer earlier to wait to avoid fireworks? Um, if you think that you're going to have fireworks, you can actually wait right next to the flagpole and just wait for that one second to pass by. Oh, one in-game time second to pass by and then grab the flagpole. But it's only going to cost like, you know, 0.35 seconds or a frame rule. So let's say, for example, let me go to the end of this level and I'll show you. Okay, so let's say here, there's a 6 on the timer, you can just wait here, and wait for it to become a 5, and then grab it. So that way you don't have to worry about fireworks appearing on screen. Now 4-3, this is pretty much a tricky level. Um, it's just precise platforming mostly. Um, basically, you want to stay on top as much as possible. If you want to drop down, then you can actually lose a lot of time here. And then I just do full jumps on these platforms, so that way I don't have to like land on this bottom one here. So if you want to take it like a safer approach, you can like kind of wait it out here. Just do full jumps. They can just run off that platform to land on the bottom one. And you can still finish with fairly a 258. The faster way to do this... It's like you want to land on this left side of the platform here. So that you can land here. And as you land on this part, you can jump again to land on here without bonking into this. So this would be the faster strat to do it. But, obviously the safer way is just to kind of take it slow here because this level is pretty dangerous to do optimally. So it's just like basic platforming. You can still get a 261. So it's 4-4. So at the very start here, you want to, as you land on this step while you're still moving normally, you want to jump off here. Another strat you can do is hold B and A at the same time, and you kind of see how Mario's like skating. This will give you like a much more safer way to drop down those stairs. But if you want to do it faster, just be sure to jump off that third step and land on this platform here. Because if you just run off, you go straight into the pit. So that's pretty much your choice. 
do the um, hold A and B strat. So you can just walk down those steps pretty comfortably. Or just jump off that third step. Now for the mace part. So the first phase, you, you gotta go out up top. And then the second phase, you wanna go on the bottom. Now since you'll have the small fire glitch, you can just run past that fire bar with no problem. And you can just basically get through the end. Now this this Bowser fight is pretty dangerous because of the Podoboo and the fire bar that's here. A lot of times uh, runs can die to this because you'll either get hit by the fireball, the Podoboo, Bowser's fire, or Bowser himself. Those are like four different things that can go wrong here. So it's just better to like slow it down, just aim your fireballs right at Bowser and then you can just beat the level that way. So it's basically pretty straightforward to beat this level. You'll kind of notice that you can actually get the pixel like right here, right where Mario's nose is at. Like you, you'll basically get the pixel there. When you get to that pixel, you can actually pull back to the right and then you can actually pass through this corner right here. Other than that, you can just like kind of fall straight through and then just go. It's like you turn left drop through then turn right so right as you're like dropping down you can just hold right so now that we're doing the, this part I usually use the you know bumping into the walls as leverage just to keep my momentum going you kind of want to like stay in line with Bowser just shoot down the fireballs because he can pretty much jump in various directions so you just like want to take him down as soon as possible all right five dash one this is where the the game starts to get a little tougher um, at the very start just want to jump over these and then do a full jump and then shoot that piranha plant down so you can land on this another way you can do this um, you can just basically jump over these guys, brush up against the pipe, and then shoot the piranha plant. This is like more of the safer way to do that. So just do like two full jumps, shoot that piranha plant down, and then just like jump over these guys. If you want to play it more safe, you can grab this Starman here. Then you don't have to worry about anybody at all. You just finish the level straight through. Now if you choose not to use a Starman, it'll look something like this. So shoot that guy, jump over these enemies. You're just going to be jumping over enemies in this one. Do a full jump on that platform. Then I suggest go the top route, shoot those two piranha plants down, just so you can avoid the, um, the bullet bills. Now if you decide to go on the bottom route there, uh, you can wait out the bullet bill, or sometimes you won't shoot at all. Um, it's pretty much based on your frame rule, like how your pace is going. So like even with the frame rules, it's going to be tough to tell like what kind of pattern you're going to get. But normally whenever I play this, like that bullet bill always shoots, so I just tend to go on the top route, just shoot down those two piranha plants, and then just, you know, finish the level. 5-2 is more of a pain. Um, there's like so many things that can go wrong in this level. So that beginning bullet bill can shoot. So what I usually like to do is just jump on this step right here. Let the bullet bill shoot and then traverse forward. Unless you, you want to just go through. You want to try to jump as low as possible. So you can land on either the third or second step. And you can avoid the bullet bill that way. So the safer way to do this is just to jump on this third step and then let him go. This bro that's over here, you just shoot him down. Now here's the thing, if you don't have fire here... Oh, that one, I didn't anticipate him that one. You can stomp on the uh, hammer bro. The way how it works 
is that let's say a, ja a hammer bro is like jumping up in the air, right? As he's falling down, you can just basically descend on top of him and you'll have priority over the hammer bro. So you can kill him instead of him killing you. So it'll look something like, you know, I'm descending downward. Like his hammer, he, like he threw a hammer, but it didn't hit me. So there's like various ways you can avoid the bro. Like you can just stomp on him going in a downward angle. But if you're going upward, then chances are he will hit you. So you just want to try to hit him going downward instead. But of course if you have fire, you can just shoot him down. No big deal. Now this section over here... Sometimes there will be a slight lag frame there. Um, it's very random when that happens. It depends on like if both of the bros will just throw a hammer or they'll just like you know they'll throw a hammer but it doesn't create a lag frame it doesn't really lose any time it's just just a slight lag frame sometimes my B button will press again when I'm trying to hold it down sometimes the bros will come to the bottom so you can just shoot them down this part right here, I'm going to do a full jump so you can land on this step. A lot of times people will land here if they try to do a full jump on that platform. So I keep on forgetting to create a safe state, <laughs> but um, let me get to that part and I'll create a safe state there. Okay, so this platform right here. In order to land on this step right here, you want to jump off like right about here if you want to land on that step. Now, if you don't want to take that chance, you can jump over here, like right in line with this left cloud, and you can land here safely with a full jump. So that's, you know, jumping off the last pixel of that block, do a full jump, and you can land on that step. Now if you do it the safer way, you can just jump early here, but then it'll slow you down a lot, so you have to watch out for the fireworks. Alright, 5-3, another like dangerous level. You get bullet bills this time, and this is basically the carbon copy of 1-3. <clears throat> you want to kill that specific Goomba right there. You can either choose to kill the Goomba or the, um, the Koopa that's floating around because of this particular platform right here, the one that I'm standing on. Now let's say I didn't do that. So if I didn't kill those guys, that platform is gone, and I'll just fall straight through into the pit. So let's see if I, you know, killing the Koopa, that'll make the platform appear. So I can, oh, I didn't even stop on him. Let me see. These, this is not a good bullet bill pattern either. Let me see. Yeah, that, I got the troll bill right there. This is a troll bill pattern that I'm getting. I'm trying to kill this. Okay, kill the Goomba. So the platform is there. Yeah, I know, crazy, right? If you're going too fast, you don't kill anybody at that particular spot. Because if you think about it this way, this screen right here, there's already... F you got the platform, you got the the Bullet Bill, the Goomba, and the Koopa, that's four enemy sprites. Basically, the platform counts as an enemy sprite. So if I kept going, the Koopa is still technically on the screen, so it's going to despawn that other platform on the screen, unless I kill one of these guys off. But particularly, you want to kill off either the Goomba or the Koopa to do that, not the Bullet Bill. Trying to find a good angle to kill this Koopa. 
I just stomp on everybody. But I think sometimes they choose to shoot a fireball at that Koopa. But the uh, what do you call it? the platform still doesn't appear that way. So like my recommended strat for this, stomp on this Goomba right here. But just slow down in case you get a bad troll build there. But chances are you may not get this same exact pattern. So you can actually, well not slow it down too much because you will lose the momentum. So you can pretty much see how like 5-3 is a pretty dangerous level. Because it looks simple because it's a copy of 1-3. But yeah, as you can see, anything can go wrong here. Get that Goomba right about here, then do a full jump to land on that platform. And then the rest is pretty much simple from that point. <clears throat> Alright, 5 4. So there's a couple things you can do here. You can go straight through, but sometimes you'll get a pretty bad fire bar pattern. But if you want to get a good fireball pattern, wait here until the timer hits 292. Once it hits 292, then then you go, and you'll get this good fireball pattern, so you can easily avoid that last one. So if I went normally, and of course the fireball patterns pretty much varies. So I'll get this kind of pattern. I can still jump over it, but it's a very tight window to do that. But if instead, if you just wait here, when the timer hits 292, then move, you'll get the good fire bar pattern. And this is basically just like 2-4, so pretty much same things apply, except you'll get Potaboos here. So you can just kind of slow that down. So yeah, you can pretty much take your time on that Bowser fight right there. Well, that's... You didn't wait long enough. There we go. Oh, now I got a bad power pattern. <laughs> so you can kind of see like how different the fire bar patterns can be. That's a faster way to do it. If you want to do it a safer way, here's one safe way you can do this. Let's see if this will give me good. Okay, this gives me good bars. You can pretty much go up here. Well, that platform up here, so I just bumped me right down into the Bowser's fire. I normally don't do this a lot, so just kind of ride that platform out. You can go up this way. You can do a full jump. You can barely avoid this left Totobu here to land on this platform. And then you can just continue forward. And pretty much same same strat applies. Use this platform to your advantage and just shoot down Bowser that way. That's 5 4. You can pretty much treat this um, any way as possible. I think if you're around the 257 range, you should be fine. Alright, 6 1. At the very beginning, you want to jump off these two question mark blocks here. Because the spine or the lucky two will not throw the spiny. Now, let's say I didn't jump up on those question blocks. I just keep going. He throws a spiny, so you would have to shoot him down. So if you don't want to shoot him down, Jump off right here, and he doesn't throw one. So that's pretty much like a free strat you can do. And then this level is pretty straightforward, so... 
it's kind of like 4-1 in a way. You know, you don't really have to worry about enemies on the screen or anything like that. And the Locky Tube just doesn't get in the way at all. 6-2 on the other hand. This is where you got to do a lot of shooting. So you got to shoot this piranha plant here. Do a full jump to land on this particular uh, pipe. <laughs> that Koopa was just in the way, so I just shot him down. So, shoot this guy. Do a full jump, like, right here on this block. So, as you can see, this is basically three blocks long. So there's one block, two block, three block. You can kind of line it up underneath that ground here, too. So there's, like, one, two, and three. So that's, like, your visual cue. Well, that's an interesting sound. So, jump off that last one to land on this pipe right here. And then from here, you want to land on this platform. And then shoot down those two piranha plants in quick succession. So, it'll be something like this. Do a full jump here. Another full jump. Oops, messed that up. Full jump. Shoot and shoot, and then you can land on this platform up here. Now, as you're still going, you can shoot a fireball, like, right about here. And you can kind of see that it's bouncing towards that pipe. So you can pretty much get rid of that piranha plant pretty easily as you're still going. Full jump. Shoot these guys, then shoot about here. And you can do a full jump. And then just kind of keep going. You can choose to shoot the piranha plants down if you want, but you can just do a full jump. You can avoid them completely. And then you don't have to worry about these guys, but shoot down this piranha plant. And then there's another piranha plant that appears here. You want to shoot that guy down. And then as you appear on the end, you want to like intentionally slow down right about here after you shoot this piranha plant down. And then you can get like a 342 on the timer. So if I play this level normally, it'll look something like this. You can choose to shoot him down, you don't really need to. Yeah, you gotta see I can still avoid them. Intentional slowdown. So you got a 342. So if you, if you kept going on that you know, at the same speed, then you get a 343 on the timer and you'll get three fireworks that way. So you, you want to do that intentional slowdown at that portion. So I'll do it one more time. Now if you want to take this safely, you can just brush up against the pipes and then shoot down the piranha plants that way. Like it'll cost you like a few seconds, but it's not that bad of a time loss. But it's a lot of fun just to shoot down the piranha plants this way. I'll show I'll show the other way too. So like brush up against the pipe, do a full jump, brush up another pipe. Whoa, that was close. You can also go down this pipe here. But it doesn't really cover much ground. It'll just put you in this section right here. I sometimes I'll make pretty cool sound effects like that. That's a power pack, really. <laughs> like trying to reload a safe state after like shooting a fireball or something. Internal slowdown. And there we go. Alright, 6-3. There's a couple ways you can tackle this one. So you can do the top route. So basically you can just go on these platforms here. But you want to like kind of do a left to right movement just so you can stay on those platforms. Otherwise you'll just fall and die. You can use the spring. As well. So I did that a little too fast with the springs, so 
So the second way you can do this, you can use the spring. So you can like basically use both springs, one spring, or just like, you know, no spring at all. So there's just like various different ways you can do this level. Now if you want to do this fast, this is the faster way to do this. Sometimes you can actually bonk underneath that platform and you can fall to the pit. Of course, watch out for the um, bullet bills too. So you can finish this level in 255. Sometimes you'll get a 256 here if you go a little too fast. Um, but it's very rare when that happens. So again, if you want to do the safe way to do this. You can use the spring. Well, not maybe not the first spring. I don't really recommend that one. Because sometimes that can be pretty finicky. Because it's basically land on those platforms. Okay, don't do a full jump there. Yeah, see, like, you can pretty much die anywhere on this level. So let's see. You can just, like, run off here. You'll land on that platform. You can use this spring to get on this one. And then just kind of go straight through. And you'll finish with a 254, so it's not that bad. 6-4 is more scary. Um, this is basically like 1-4, but this time it has like extra photo boost here. So you can just wait out that one, so you can barely pass under this fire bar right here. Because if you just did it the fast way, so like let's say, or maybe not the fast way, but you waited too long, sometimes you'll get hit there. So it's just better to like wait for like a split second than just start moving, so you can completely avoid that fire bar. Sometimes this third fire bar will get in the way. You can just like wait here. Just so the fire bar can pass through. Then you can go. You can pretty much take this part really slowly because uh, these fire bars are actually pretty difficult to get through, like, you know, to avoid really. So yeah, it'll look something like this. So kind of wait there. Just keep going. If you see that fire bar is going to be in the way, wait there. Wait there for a little bit, just past these fire bars. And then just shoot down Bowser. And this is where Bowser starts throwing hammers, so you really don't want to use this platform this platform for leverage anymore. You kinda wanna do like a short jump and then just start wailing fireballs on him. And then eventually he'll go down that way. So let's play this level one more time. Yeah, barely past that fire bar. Wait a little bit there to pass that bottom middle one. That time he just <laughs> went forward and bopped noses with me. Wait here a little. Yeah, that's a usually when he jumps forward that's probably that's a bad Bowser pattern to get. So this is like a big run killer here most of the time. There we go. So pretty much just like slow down when needed, just so you can shoot down Bowser that way. Alright, 7 1. A lot of jumps here. So, pretty much what I like to do is like I want to jump on top of these bullet bill cannons. Then shoot down any enemy necessary. So, this is pretty much the fast way to do this level. Do like another intentional slowdown so you can get a 352 here. Now, the slower way to do this. You can pretty much just run up against these bullet bill cannons. Just watch if they shoot or not. And I just want to like shoot down the piranha plants. You don't have to like shoot both of those down. You can choose to shoot one of them. 
And then you can kind of take it slow here too. So 338, that's actually really slow. So you can pretty much take this in any approach. Um, just be careful with the bullet bills that shoot. And then shoot down whichever prana plants will be in the way. You can just jump over them too, that works as well. You want to avoid this buzzy beetle too. Sometimes I'll, I'll see people stop on this bu buzzy beetle when it's on this step right here. And then they can do an intentional slowdown and then grab the flagpole that way. So you can like stay the bottom route too. You can do that. Kind of noticed that I'm doing like very light jumps too. Let me do it fast again. So the fast way to do this is do like full jumps basically. Like as you're doing the full jumps on those bullet bill cannons. You want to be sure to jump off the right side of the bullet bill cannon while you're doing a full jump. So you can like pretty much slow down there. You can even brush up against the bottom of the flagpole and then grab it that way too. Now 7-2. This one's a doozy. Um, normally I don't like to shoot down the enemies here unless they're like completely in my way. What I like to do is just, you know, kind of avoid as many enemies as possible because you want to manipulate the, the ending section. Um, Cosmic tested this out when he was um, running Warpless at the time, when he got his world record. So there's like, at the very beginning, he swims down under two bloopers. Well, I kind of ran into that that coral reef. I still exited it with the 315, but... My stream? I usually stream speedruns. Like, NES games. Like, 2D platformers, basically. NES, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo. But this channel in particular, it's all about retro gaming. And I just realized I didn't make a save state for 7-2, so I'm playing through 7-1 again. Okay, I'll make a safe stay here. There we go. Okay. So there's like two particular bloopers. Swim under this guy. And this guy. And then just kind of avoid enemies going through the level. If you think they're going to hit you, then just shoot down with their fireball. Otherwise, you can just swim past through them. Like, that guy would have gotten a little close, so I shoot him down. Shoot that guy down. So there, I got a good pattern there, so I can get a 316 at the end of the timer. And get a 310 exiting. Now, if I were to shoot down all these enemies... Let me wait until the countdown goes so I can reload. It'll actually depend how the ending would go. Like, whether you shoot a bunch of enemies or not. Like, sometimes you can get pretty trigger happy by shooting a ton of enemies down, then it can pretty much determine, like, what your patterns will be at the very end. If I'm lucky, I shouldn't get anything at the end. Nope, I got a blooper there. Barely avoided him. <laughs> so yeah, you can pretty much see the difference when you shoot down the enemies and all that. So it's pretty much your preference whether you want to shoot the enemies down if they're going to be in your way or just like leave them alone. So you can get like a pretty good pattern at the very end. Now 7-3 is just like 2-3 except they threw in Koopas and more Cheap Cheeps. I pretty much just shoot down the Koopas, so that they're not really much of a nuisance. You can also stomp on them too, but 
a lot of times you don't want to do that because sometimes if you stomp on them and there's a pit right next to them, you can fall off into the pit. So I'm going to be careful with that. So a pretty straightforward level. You don't need to worry about that one. 7-4 is another maze level. So you want to take the bottom, the middle, and the top. And then for the second page, you want to go top. It's like a slight turnaround to the left so you can land on the other platform to the middle and then the top again. So it'll take you to the Bowser's Lair. So 7-4 is pretty simple since you don't have any enemies to worry about. Except for this one Potobu right here, but he's very easy to avoid. So pretty much you notice how I did that slight turnaround there. So I'll make a safe date of that part so I can show you. So I do like a slight turnaround here so you can avoid this corner. That corner of the platform because if I didn't do that turnaround, I'll bonk right into it and I'll just fall straight through here. Let me see. So I'll just like fall straight through like that. So you just want to do like a slight turnaround and then do like a light jump so you can land on this middle one here. Then you want to jump on this little platform to get on this one here. Now if you kind of shift the screen, so let's say you're shifting the screen a certain way. Let me see if I can do a better one with this. So let's say if I'm shifting the screen a lot. Maybe this could still work? Yeah, it still did, okay. Because there were times where like I shifted the screen too much and it didn't read the maze pattern. Like that, <laughs> it didn't read that one. So you just want to make sure... Because it's kind of hard to tell like, um, like where is the right spot of the maze. Because in the All-Stars version of this game, you can actually hear like a chime go off. Like, you're going the right direction, but this one it doesn't, so you pretty much have to guess on it. But, very straightforward maze. Now, 8-1. Um, if any of you have played any percent before, you'll see these levels a lot. Um, especially when you're small Mario and you don't have any power-ups at all, you have to do pipe jumps. But with fire, you can just easily shoot down the pir uh, piranha plants and just go through. I usually hit that star block out of instinct. Shoot down this one, then jump over those. I usually do like full jumps here, but there's also like a safer way to do this too. But this is pretty much the best way to get like a 200 on the timer. So this is like basically the fast way to do that. Now the slower way to do this, and you can still get like a 197 or a 195. can like brush up against uh, some areas here or just do like brief slowdowns so like you can actually slow down here I think this will probably give me a 195 if I play this right let's see if I'm right no I gave me a 197 so I was slightly faster there so if you want to take it the safer way, you want to aim for either a 197 or a 195 on the timer. But if you feel pretty confident with fire, then just shoot down the piranha plants. And then just be sure in this section right here, stomp on these two Koopas. So it'll despawn one of those Goombas so you can pass through easily. Because if you didn't do that, then you'll have those three Goombas on screen. So you would have to like wait a little bit and then just jump over them. Okay, just gonna get to 8 2 here.
Okay, now 8-2. At the very start of the level, I usually use... Um, I think it's this tree as a visual cue. No, it's this one. I, this tree right here. So this little tree, I use that as a visual cue to jump on this step right here. <clears throat> and then from this step, you want to jump again so you can land on this second step right here. And then there's a Koopa that's hopping down so you can like avoid them from underneath. Like so. So you want to jump off where that small tree is. And then you can just easily avoid the Koopas that way. And if you want to take it slowly, you can kind of wait here. And then you can go. Just so you know, basically watch out for the Locky too. But ideally, you want to like use the tree as your visual cue. Then you don't have to worry about these guys. And like here, you can basically just jump on top of the bullet bill cannons. You don't necessarily have to do it this way, but you can. Now you see there's these Koopas here, right? There is a safer way to do this part. Now I'll make a safe state at that Koopa section. You can also take the bottom round if you wish. You can go down this pipe right here, so it'll despawn those Koopas. But this is a little bit slower though. So now you see that those Koopas are gone, so you don't have to worry about them. You do have to like shoot down this guy though, because sometimes he can be a troll. <laughs> and just hit you. Oops. Messing up that jump. Huh. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Took me a couple tries to get that. Now, if you don't want to despawn those Goombas, then you can just use your Fire Flower to shoot them down. Uh, but don't fall into the hole, though. <laughs> You can kind of notice that I don't really shoot at a lot of enemies unless the, you know, if it's really necessary to do so. Just avoid these guys. You can still get like a 342 here. But anywhere between like 337 and 342 is a good time to get an 8-2. So you can pretty much keep that in mind. 8-3, if you have fire, it's pretty much a breeze. Even though it looks really dangerous, especially in any percent, because, you know, being small, you gotta have to watch out for those hammer bros. So with Fire Flower, you can just basically shoot them, but just watch out for the hammers, because sometimes if they have a hammer out and you shoot them down, they can throw it backwards like that guy did. And just be sure you brush up against this platform up here, so that way when you finish the level, it'll show 242 on the clock. You can pretty much brush up against anything else too and just like finish the level normally. So you can kind of see like I did a downward jump on that bro. You can still kill him that way. That bro had his hammer out, shot him down, he threw it backwards. So yeah, 8-3 is pretty much a breeze. When you're like, fire Mario. But if you're small, you would just have to do those precise jumps where you're like basically descending downward and it'll just land on the bro. Okay, now 8-4. Since this is the final level of the game, uh, I'll try to be a little more detailed about this one. So as you're going down, you want to jump off this third step here to land on the platform to the right. Because if you don't like jump or anything, you'll fall straight into the pit. Or you can pretty much just kind of take it slowly and then do a full jump to land on here. That's also doable. But it's better off to just like run off the third step and then just do a full jump that way. Now this part, you can do a full jump here or you can ride the platform to get across. Oh, I probably should have stood on that. <laughs> here, I'll do it by crossing the platform and you'll see. That's more of like an easier jump to get through. Now if you don't want to use the platform, 
then you'll have to do a full jump. Right about here. Okay, now this part, this is the wall jump room. There's a one frame setup and a two frame setup for wall jump. Two frame setup is basically like as you're exiting the pipe, and then when Mario's walking off, you push the B button to start running, and that'll initiate the two frame setup. So you should get the get like two frames for that wall jump pixel to go. I missed the pixel that time, but I normally don't like to go for the two frame setup. I like the one frame a lot more. So there's the wall jump there. So if I do the wall one frame jump or one frame setup, excuse me, you would have to like jump right as you land. And you kind of notice that Mario kind of stood up a little bit. Or like he had like this walking motion. That's the wall jump pixel. And by doing the one frame setup, you have like one frame to get this jump down. And it's like one of the harder tricks in the game. Now if you were to bonk into anything like that, you can still kind of get the pixel that way too. But it's more difficult. Now if you don't want to do the wall jump, you can just do this too. Just uncover this block and then just go. It's slower, but it's more safer to do that. In case you don't want to go for the wall jump. Let me see if I can get the wall one frame set up. There we go. I keep getting the pixel, but I'm just missing the jump. <laughs> yeah, in case you don't get the wall jump, then just uncover that block and just go down. It doesn't really lose that much time. But getting the wall jump is very much worth learning too. But if you want to go for wall jump, I would suggest go for two frame setup. There you go. That's two frame setup. But I like one frame setup a lot more. But I'm going to be very stubborn if I don't get the one frame, but... I'll skip on it. Let's try to just get it while jump and go. Okay, we'll just go with that. Alright, turnaround room. You want to turn around right here. And then, that's actually pretty far. Like, you kind of notice... Let me see if I can get my mouse here. Like, this set right here. You won't basically want it to be, like, right where my mouse is pointing at. It's kind of hard to tell because it's upside down. But about this many pixels right here so past this black line this is when you'll know that you have the perfect turnaround room to get the wrong warp here if you get like up to here like right on this line it'll take you back to the beginning of the level yo what's up Wendon? how you doing so let's demonstrate that so let's say i didn't go very far at all right this is actually a perfect pixel so if I go down the pipe, it should take me to the underwater section. Now if I didn't get that, let's say I was just slightly short. Ah, that fish is just being a nuisance. There we go. We'll just go in here right now. Takes me back to the beginning of the level. So. You can pretty much just scroll as much as possible, as much as you need, just so you can get that free wrong warp here. I'm doing pretty well. Just giving everyone here a demonstration of how to speedrun Super Mario Brothers. So yeah, that wrong warp is pretty critical to get. Now if you don't decide to do the wrong warp, you can do the normal way too. Which is by going in this pipe. But that's actually a lot slower. So it's more beneficial to just do the turnaround, get enough pixels on the screen, and then just go in the pipe. It's like a much faster entry. Alright, underwater section. There's like various ways to do this underwater section. Um, you can choose to walk on here. Just avoid the fire bars and the bloopers. 
Another way you can do this in a safe way is you can just swim directly on top, shoot down the bloopers. Actually, that wasn't safe at all. Sometimes I'll see people go the top route and they'll still make it through, but... I think it's because I walked down too many frames there. So I just like taking the bottom route, it's more safer that way. And then you don't have to shoot down Bowser, like right as you grab the axe that's game over. And that's when the run is over. You can choose to shoot down Bowser, but it honestly wastes time, so it's not really necessary to do that. So I'll do the water section the way it's intended to be. So what I like to do here, let go of the D-pad, like right on that middle fire bar section. Sometimes you'll get hit, but it should still be fine here. Drop down. I hold A, and then Mario would just go straight into the pipe. Another fellow runner by the name of Royal Gamer taught me that strat. And just grab the axe and then you're done. So that's pretty much how you speedrun Super Mario Brothers level by level. I hope this is pretty helpful to everybody. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. And I can pretty much load up another ROM where I can pick any level that you guys want me to demonstrate. I can do that now, and then I'll just do one more run for you guys. Are there any particular levels that anybody wants me to go over? The one with the mace, so that must be 7 4. Okay. okay, I can go 7 4. Okay, so there's another ROM, ha um, ROM hack out there. It's called Super Mario Bros. Practice. So there's a website that you can go to. It's called github.com slash pelson slash SMB practice. Uh, you can pretty much you know, go through any world, any level. You can play as Mario or Luigi, and if you hit um, the P-Ups, one is where you had the mushroom, but that one's kind of broken. Because if you grab another power-up, it'll turn you small. And then two is like the fire flower, so. <laughs> but okay, I'll do 7-4. Uh, Let me see. And yeah, zero P-Ups is good. Okay, so we take the bottom, the middle, and the top for the first phase. Second phase, you want to take top, do like a slight turnaround to land on that little platform, go in the middle, jump on this one, and jump on this top platform here. So it's like top, middle, top. And then this will take you to Bowser's Lair. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Virus. And it says Kappa, but I'll replay it again. Uh, let me. I think it's down select to get back here. Okay, there we go. So I'll play it one more time. So bottom, middle, then top. And top, and slight turnaround. So that way you don't bonk into that ceiling of that platform. And since I don't have fire, I'll just have to wait out Bowser. So yeah, that's pretty much how 7-4 goes. Yeah, 7-4 is actually not too bad of a level. I mean, thankfully there aren't any enemies you have to deal with. Except for like the Podoboo at the end. Uh, let's reset the level. Let me... 
So yeah, that's 7-4. Is there anything else you guys want me to cover or review? And when then I'll do a, a full run pretty soon after if there's anything that anybody wants me to go through. And I'll probably have to do this with two power-ups since I can't get small fire. The level that I think is the hardest basically anything in world 5 um, and 6-4 I think those are like the hardest levels in the game um, also pretty much anything in world 8 is pretty hard too <clears throat> no it's all good Wendy no worries <laughs> autocorrect yeah I don't like autocorrect either but I can go through uh, world 5 and I'll use big fire for this. So I'm just basically avoiding the enemies. Um, not really shooting them down, because if there's like too many on screen, then I just shoot fireballs. Oh yeah. Sometimes if there's a one-up block here, you can just fall straight through. <laughs> Uh, the only way how the 1-up blocks actually appear is if you collect all the coins in the Dash 3 level beforehand. Like, like in this case, 4-3. So... Yeah, 8-3 is a pretty mean one without power-ups. I can demonstrate this one, that one after like I complete World 5. So just try to visualize that like small fire right now. And I'll do 7 1 as well, virus. Yeah, see, sometimes, like, this bro right here is just an idiot. And pretty much with Big Fire Mario, you have to do, like, a lot of crouch jumps, too. Which is why I like playing a small fire a lot more. Like, right as you do, like, that crouch jump, like, not a crouch jump, but, like, a crouch slide so you can, like, get past through this block right here. So, like, when you're doing the crouch slide as Big Mario, and when you're, like, kind of sliding off a platform, it'll half his hitbox. So that way he can, like, actually clip his head through the block, or the block underneath him. Oh, I made a safe save in 7-4 again. Let me go. I'm not used to, like... <laughs> resetting and all that in this practice ROM yet. Um, so let's do 5 dash 2, 2 power ups. You can see I did that crotch slide, so I just avoided that top platform. And then I'll do 8-3 without power-ups. Okay, of course, this evil level here is 5-3. Just remember to hit this Goomba so that this platform can appear. If you don't do that, then yeah, you'll just fall to the pit. I guess I could do a run as big Fire Mario 2, just to show the differences between the two. Oh, I didn't even wait on the... I still made it through. Kind of see how many duck jumps I need to do with this guy. Uh, no, you do not need to wait for the Goomba Sprite to disappear once you stomp on him. So like after you stomp on him, you can just keep on going and then the platform will appear because technically 
after you stomp on the Goomba, it's basically treating it as if, you know, it's completely off the screen. Even though it's like still showing it as slightly squished. No, it's all good. <laughs> okay, so let's do 8-3 with no power-ups. I usually look for like a sweet spot to jump on the bros. If I see something like that, like you can go on the top route or the bottom route. But if there's a bro like in your way, I usually jump about maybe four blocks or three or four blocks before him. And now these guys, if they're jumping, I just do like a light jump and then just kind of descend. And then as I'm descending, I can just stomp on them. Like without having to worry of getting hit. So I'll play through 8-3 again. pretty much just reading the bros and it's pretty tough to do that too like if you play the game enough you can pretty much read the uh, hammer bro patterns like what they're gonna do so that they that's eight dash three without power-ups so if you're ever in that situation just basically find a sweet spot to like kill the bottom bro like if he's in your way or you know you can just basically kind of sense that if he's jumping just kind of like jump up slightly but make sure you're descending so that way you get more priority over him and you can just stomp on the hammer bro that way all right so now 7-1 okay so 7-1 i gotta do this as big mario so. So that's like pretty much the fast way to do that. Now if you don't want to do it that way, you can just take the bottom routes. It's like you're more in danger to get hit by a bullet bill if you're like taking bottom routes. So I just try to aim for a jumping on top of the cannons. Because I feel that it's more easier that way rather than just like, you know, being on the bottom and having the risk of being shot at with the bullet bill. You can still get a 1 at the end of the timer, you get like one firework, it's like no big deal. So what was the problem that you're having with 7-1 virus? Like it's more riskier going in the bottom. Every time you did it, you just wing it. Yeah, I would just suggest that just try to jump on top of the cannons. Like, it's most of them are just basically full jumps. Um, other than that, like, you can just probably land on the ground just slightly just to jump on the top, like, the top of the cannon. So, you can pretty much do it this way, too. Um, you know, just land, jump, land and jump. Something like that. And if you think the Koopa's gonna get in your way, just shoot him down with a fireball. Or if you don't have a fireball, then just, like, avoid, you know, jump and avoid him. But just be sure to you slow down at the end, like... Yeah, there's like various ways you can do 7-1, but... It could get pretty risky, too.
Yeah, so there we go. Yeah, so like however you feel comfortable doing the level, you can do it that way. Or just do like what I just demonstrated. Oh yeah, and if if you feel really uncomfortable, you can get infinite one-ups. But it's better to do it at 3-1 instead, not here. <laughs> but it's just one of those things that you can do. So yeah, that's 7-1. That thing on my webcam. Are you talking about my input display or? I don't know. Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, to do the infinite one up, you do not need uh, big Mario for that. You can do it with small Mario as well. So, like, I'll go to 3 1. I'll play as small Mario. can let this guy pass. Oh, I didn't do it right, but yeah, you can still get it with um you can still get it with small Mario. And that was just me messing up. <laughs> I'll wait for this guy to go. Okay. Well, I mean there's infinite lives here, so I'm not worried about game over anymore. Let's get back to that spot. Okay, I'll let this guy pass. Let me see if I can get a correct setup here. Yeah, you can still get it with small Mario, but it's a little more difficult to get it. Because sometimes you'll just kick it and he'll just, like, die. I think there's, like, a... Oh, there we go. So yeah, you can pretty much do the infinite one-up trick with small Mario. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, if, if you choose to get like infinite one-ups, it's better to do it in 3-1 because it's, you know, pretty much coming up. Um, I believe there may be another level you can do that on. I think it's 4-2, but it's more risky with the Buzzy Beetle. Uh, but mostly 3-1 and 7-1 you can get like infinite one-ups that way but it's but yeah like as I said it's better to get it in 3-1 just so you can have them on hand and not worry about you know game overing anytime soon so so there's that is there anything else you guys want me to go over or any questions Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Ant. But I'll do one more run for you guys. And I'll, let's see, I'll do another small fire run. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm playing on my AV Famicom, so like, I have this thing here. <laughs> so like, I have that little adapter for the AV Famicom. And this is the cart that I play on. It's the Mario Duck Hunt combo cart. You can also play on the one with the World Cross Track Meet and the standalone cart too. But like, let's say you're gonna start a race, right? Um, like you guys are racing this game. You would have to mash start um, right at the title screen. So like if you're playing the standalone cart, you would like literally have to like mash start and then it'll go. Same thing with like the multi-cart as well. Sorry, right, I'll just do a, another run. I don't know if the timer's showing up or not. But.
<laughs> oh, thanks, Virus. Glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad I was able to put this together for you guys. And this is actually my first time doing a live tutorial as well, so... It's definitely a great experience to be a part of this. I think my timer's showing up. Well, I have the timer running, but I don't know. It's not showing up on the stream. That's okay, though. You just pretty much get a general idea. I'm gonna try to get another sub-20. Yeah, that'll be great. I mean, we encourage anybody to play SMB1 Warpless. It's a very fun category. I mean, of course, any percent is like the more popular category because of how short it is, but I personally enjoy Warpless a lot more. Um, I've been trying to grind to get a sub-1910 in this category. I mean, I'm at a 1911 right now, and world record is 1902 by Cosmic. So... I'm just like nine seconds away, but I'm sixth place on the leaderboard, so. <laughs> you have a 22.40? Yeah, you can easily drop this time down. I mean, you've been, you're a very talented SMB2 runner, so. I'm very confident you can get a sub 20 in this. Same goes to anybody that picks up this game. If you can get like at least a 20 minute time in this, you're pretty much good to go. You really push for it, Ant? <laughs> yeah, like when I saw it, like when I was watching the reveal for Nescathalon and I saw SMB1 on there, and I remember hearing Toad saying that, you know, I was pretty excited for that. <laughs> sure enough, I was. I mean, like, all the games that have been announced for Nescathlon look really fun to play. And I was trying to run Zelda 1 as well, but I'm not really good at the game. But when Cantaloupe does his tutorial, or if he does one, I'll be watching that. Contra was another game I was looking forward to, and it was really cool watching Angry Lanks do the tutorial for that one. So I'm gonna try to like perform a run of that game. Same goes for like all the other games that are happening. Doing that next Monday? Okay, I'll have to watch that. I mean, this week was perfect for me because I'm not working, so <laughs> not this week, but I will be next week. So. Aw oh, man, Cypherin, I would have gladly taught you at AGDQ as well. Like, it would have been just hands-on, I could have showed you all the tricks and stuff. But yeah, I mean, I'm glad this worked out too, so... Oh wow, White Hat is doing Wampum and Gargoyle's Quest. Oh! That's fine. I can get the power-ups back. So you don't want to be in this scenario. And like, you're technically small right now, but you're big. And you have that bigger hitbox. So anything can practically kill you right now. So I'll just do that. <laughs> I'm gonna get the fire flower right there. Oops. 
That's fine. That was a pretty bad 3-1, but it's still a decent range. So let's see, technically on my timer, entering 3-2 in 544, so that's not too bad. Hey, and is there a way you can get the timer back up on screen? Oops. It's okay. <laughs> oh, no worries, Ant. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if there's like any time people need help with this game, they, they can just always come up and ask me. Um, they can also ask like people like Cosmic, um, Darby and Andrew G. There's like so many people that run this game. Um, as far as Warpless goes, there's actually not that many runners for Warpless. I mean, not too long ago, we did have a Warpless tournament, and there were, like, a lot of people that were involved in the tournament that got sub-20s. Oh, jeez. So that's another bad situation, and Bowser jumps forward. Okay, barely made it through. So that was a little scary situation. I could have died there and, and had to redo the glitch again. But this can still sub 20, I think. But I already had two power up losses, so that adds up a lot of time. So this is pretty much a bad way of playing this game. <laughs> There's also other other runners like Goofy Chocobo, Royal Gamer, um, Retro Bob, who's also a Super Mario World runner. And I'm getting get fireworks here, so that's gonna cost me like two seconds. But this is this is like pretty much a great demonstration of what not to do in the run. <laughs> so I'll just keep playing it like this. Speaking of SMB1, like. Um, as a lot of you know, I did play this at Retrothon a couple weeks ago, which was a lot of fun. Um, I also um, am playing this at a SGDQ this year against Cosmic, Retro, Bob, and Royal Gamer in a four-player race in Warpless. So that's coming up. So I'm pretty excited for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, the first run I had was really good, now this one's really bad, so... If this can still sub-20, I'd be pretty amazed. But it'll probably be like a 1950 or something like that. Unless I play really well in these next few levels. So I guess I'll just take the time to, like, talk a little bit about myself. Um... I started speedrunning back in March of 2016 um, at the very first Calithon. I basically went there as a spectator and um, I made friends with Fast at CC and Jimmy Poopins over there. So they were teaching me how to speedrun like Mega Man 3 and Ninja Gaiden 2. But when I first started speedrunning, my first speed game was actually Mega Man 2 and that's like quite a game to start with. And then after a while I picked up SMB3, Any% percent No Wrong Warp, and I was playing that for a while until I switched over to SMB1, Any% percent. and I've been speedrunning SMB1 and SMB2J or Lost Levels for like the past two years, so those are like my main speed games. And even though I'm called Sonic, I do speedrun Sonic games as well, so <laughs> it's not like I really don't. Um, I'm actually currently learning Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And I do speedrun Sonic 1 and 2. Whoa, that's a weird Koopa. I was actually surprised I bought that guy. <laughs> yeah, nice showcase of backup strats. 
Yeah, as far as marathons go, I my very first marathon was Calithon of last year. I raced against Darbian and SMB1, SMB2J, both 80%. Um, and then SMB3 with Duck Fist and Red Ninja Josh. So that was like my very first marathon run. And then I was part of the the Mario Warpless relay race at SGDQ last year. And then I did like other online marathons. So Yeah, the name did come before the speedruns. Uh, my name actually, back in the old AIM days, or AIM, whatever, <laughs> I came up with that uh, screen name. This is like back in middle school, so I would say roughly, I don't know, like when I was in sixth grade or something. <laughs> so I've had that name ever since. And that's how people know me as, like, when they're calling me by my quote-unquote code name. Ah, oh, I tried to jump on that guy. Ah, uh, this is not good. I still want to keep small fire here. Oh, no, I don't. So that's what happens when you lose small fire. Now you're back to normal. Now this is starting to turn into a train wreck. I don't think sub-20 is possible now. I can probably still get like a 20 minute time. But yeah, you can pretty much see how deadly 5-4 can be. Hey, he's not gonna let me do the glitch either. So yeah, now you can pretty much see what you do in a situation if you lose small fire. This is pretty much where you like kind of adapt to the big fire strats. And it's pretty much the same method as small fire except now you gotta worry about a bigger hitbox and you gotta do duck jumps here and there. So I have two lives, and of course, like in case I do game over, um, you can use the continue code. So like you go back to the title screen, hold A and start, and it'll take you back to the world that you died on. So let's say you have like one life left and you're about to enter like let's say 7-1. Uh, you can intentionally die and then do the continue code that way, so it doesn't cost too much time. A good race marathon time for this game? I'd say like around the 21, 22 range. That's pretty good. Um, 20 would be really good, and then a 19 would be phenomenal. Like 19, 30. But I would say like anywhere between 19.30 to like 22 minute mark. Yeah, that's probably like a good race marathon time for this game. I normally put my estimate as 25 minutes because sometimes things can go wrong. Like you'll have a really bad game over somewhere. Bowser jumped forward that time, so I didn't really have much room to shoot him down. So entering 7 1 in about 15 minutes. So I'll probably have to. Let's see. Okay, this is good. I'll grab the power up here. It's actually possible to get flag full glitch there.
Wait, what? Pad my schedule? Okay, here's another thing. Like, when you're big, Mario, if you, like, push down and swim on the ground, it'll actually half your hitbox. It's like, like, basically Mario, like, around his chest to lower, that's where his hitbox is when you do that glitch. Otherwise, you can, like, swim through the ceiling or something like that, like, halfway through. Oh, my gosh. Uh, this is not good. I need to get past 7-4 and then intentionally die on 8-1. Because if I die here, um, it'll take me back to 7-1 with the continue code. So that's going to cost a lot of time. Oh, the 25 estimate time? Yeah, I just put that on there as a big cushion. But it really doesn't take 25 minutes. Unless you have something horribly go wrong. Like this run right now. But it, this run, I think at this rate, it's going to be like a 21. Twenty, twenty-one, somewhere around there. You kind of see I kind of slowed down there, otherwise I would have gotten fireworks. <laughs> that cheap cheap emote looks really funny. So here we go, and just for you, buddy. 7-4. <laughs> this is pretty much how you play it when you're like Big Mario. I'm gonna intentionally get. Well, I was I was trying to get hit there, but the hammers let me through. I wanted to like intentionally die to refill my lives. So. <laughs> Easy pathing, path yep, exactly. I could still keep this going, but I just can't die. <laughs> okay, if I don't do the pipe jumps. So you kind of notice that the enemy patterns are different. Oh boy. Okay, here we go. Can just wait here a little bit. I'm going to try to pick up the fire flower in 8-2 if I don't get hit anywhere. Oh boy. That almost killed me. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is probably going to be like a 21 or a 22. Which is fine. I mean, things can happen. Scoop is here. Alright, this should be smooth sailing moving forward. kind of know is like I'll shoot fireballs slightly early so like as they get to the end of the screen like the hammer bro will be there and they'll just die instantly all right eight dash four coming to the home stretch here with one life <laughs> Let's 
take it a little safe here. There's the wall jump. There's actually another way you can do wall jump. <laughs> Something like that. You just like basically clip into the wall and then just jump again. And this is the half hitbox I was talking about. I swam a bit too high there. Okay, either I'm gonna die or I'm gonna I'm gonna beat the game. What's gonna happen? I'm gonna beat the game. <laughs> So 2128. That's what'll happen if you like end up making mistakes in the run. So that's actually not that bad of a time. So this would be pretty good for like a marathon slash race time, so. But that's that's Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> Thanks for the GG's guys. I hope uh, this tutorial will help out all the players for Nescathlon, um, and if you guys are just going to run this in general, um, best of luck to you all, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me or um, ask any of the other SMB1 runners. We'd be glad to help you guys out. So, yeah, of course, you can find me on Discord. Um, there is SMB1 Discord, or yeah, just Mario Discord in general, so... But I think that's going to do it for me, guys. Uh, thank you for having me, RGL. You guys are awesome. and I'm very honored to be a part of this. Uh, this is a very great experience to do a live tutorial for you guys. But with that, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Like, you guys saw two different runs, a good run and a bad run. And then you guys got, like, pretty much in-depth stuff about each level, so... But, yeah, thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. I'll be signing off.